I'm not trying to strive towards doing something positive with your life. I thought that was awesome. But just a little food for thought and a little bit of time for some dialogue. See those two working the case. They are determined to nail Welcome close to the cross. Welcome to Pandy's Weekly Recaps. Well, hello. I'm Pandy of Pandy's Hair Candy and More. If this is your first time stopping by my channel, welcome. If you are already Pandy's peeps and you already rock with your girl, you already know what it is, welcome back. It's been a little minute since I came through and dropped the trending recap video as a lot has happened since the last one. Um, but I'm here now. So kick back, relax, grab you a refreshment and a beverage, and prepare yourself to enjoy this commentary. Now, if you like this commentary, please don't forget to blow dry on that like button for your girl. I would greatly appreciate it as it greatly helps me with my analytics here on YouTube. And if you really enjoy the commentary, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It's free after all. It didn't cost you anything. It is free 99. Now, with that being said, I want to thank each and every one of you who took a moment to come on over here and support my channel. Again, I greatly appreciate you for clicking on the video. Now, for the most part, my channel consists of hair and wig reviews beauty and wellness product reviews. However, over here you'll find pretty much a wide variety of content, hence the name, Pandy's Hair Candy and more. Now during these recaps, I like to examine stories. They're usually viral and trending stories that have been kind of trending across multiple media platforms. And I just kind of give like a brief summarization. Um, to bring about awareness. A lot of times I'm finding that most people are turning to social media um, and we're watching TV less and less. So it's just for entertainment and informational purposes. Um, it is just commentary and my perspective. All right, y'all. Now, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna jump right on in and share these stories with you guys. Um, I welcome the feedback, so drop down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Um, and again, like I said, if you enjoy the commentary, go ahead and subscribe. It's free. So without further ado, let's get right into a few of these latest trending stories. Um, now, the first one is actually going to be coming to us right out of Missouri. This first one was about a St. Louis man who pulled out a gun on protesters. He says that him and his wife were scared for their life. Now, Mark McCloskey and his wife were both pictured pointing weapons at protesters, denouncing Mayor Lydia or Lida, Lida Cruson's decision to identify people asking for police reform. Now, Mark McCloskey is a St. Louis man who pointed a weapon at these protesters as they entered a private street claiming that he is the victim and that he was in imminent fear. Now, they actually live in this gated community and it was apparently a private road, um, a neighborhood which the mayor also lived at. Okay, so these protesters were trying to get off up in there, trying to get at the mayor's home. So... McCloskey and his wife came outside basically stating they felt like they were in imminent fear. Now, the Missouri couple is under fire for brandishing guns in the front yard of their home. They told police that protesters had broke a gate to get into the private street, and the pair say they only retrieved their firearms when they spotted multiple people who were already armed. Now, Al Watkins, an attorney for Mark McCloskey, says that he and his wife said that the protest was largely peaceful 
and that the pair did not bring their guns out of their home until two men in particular, both of whom were white men, started menacing them. Now, he further goes on to state that their fear was that these two were marching along with the Black Lives Matter protesters and that they were acting in a fashion inconsistent with the message being given and that they were not arming themselves against peaceful protesters, but that they were arming themselves about people with really bad vibes. Now, he further went on to state that after the couple brought the guns out, others began threatening them, unaware of the reason behind the couple's interpreted need to arm themselves. Now, based on the couple's um, actions, Police labeled the incident a case of trespassing and assault by intimidation, according to their incident report. The protesters were reportedly marching toward Mayor Lita Cruzen's home to demand her resignation after an apparent Facebook Live briefing where the mayor actually read the names of those wanting to defund the police force. Wow. Now that video was removed and Cruson apologized for the same for the event the same day, saying she didn't intend to cause distress. Protesters nationwide have been pushing to defund the police over the death of George Floyd and other black people at the hands of law enforcement. Y'all, <laughs> so much going on, y'all. Did any of you all hear about the um, story here? And if not, I mean, what are y'all's thoughts just based on what we heard here? Did you get the opportunity to actually see this story as it unfolded? This just happened like within the last week, week and a half. So drop down in the comments and let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear your feedback. Now, moving right along, this next story actually came to us out of Houston. I'm sorry, Fort Hood, Texas. And it is the story of soldier Vanessa Gilling. New details have emerged in the original disappearance of this soldier. She went missing on April 22nd and one of two suspects has since died. When Vanessa Gilling was a little girl, she dreamed of joining the, joining the army, her parents said. At some point, her family said she confided in her two sisters that she was having problems while posted at Fort Hood. She shared with them, allegedly, that she was being sexually harassed, but did not report this out of fear. Now, while at work on April 22nd, April Gillen was contacted by a fellow soldier, specialist Aaron David Robinson, via text message to deliver paperwork according to court documents. Now, after her disappearance, her army ID, bank card, and two sets of keys were found by investigators inside a workshop where she worked. The family attorney, Natalie Quam, states that she had previous issues with a superior of hers that was an ongoing issue. Now, Quam later stated that she was told Gillian and Robinson had an argument in the armory where they worked at after she discovered his alleged affair with the estranged wife of another former soldier. Later, as local police were closing in on Robinson, he actually died by suicide. Now later, because this search went on for several days and it was plastered all across the media, Unfortunately, human remains were discovered near Fort Hood were subsequently identified as that of Gillian Quam said. This case was very problematic because like I said, the search was ongoing. It was all over the news. Her parents just, you know, her, her mother and sisters were always, I remember every morning last week, just seeing them all over the news because they felt it in their spirit that something happened and that, you know, her disappearance was somehow tied to her work because 
they just felt like, you know, she had been complaining about those problems that she had um, been dealing with on an ongoing basis there in her workplace um, at the hands of a co-worker. So what are y'all's thoughts? Have you all seen that story? Have you been following it? And it kind of just, you know, I don't know, it's just very problematic all around y'all. What are y'all's thoughts? Drop down in the comments and let your girl know what's on your mind. Now, moving right along, leading up to the 4th of July weekend, protesters attempting to block a Mount Rushmore road ahead of a Trump rally scheduled for the 4th of July. Um, they, they attempted to block the road at the Mount Rushmore National Memorial Park ahead of Trump's Independence Day rally, but they were met by police and the National Guard. Now, the protesters there, organized by Native American leaders, condemned the use of the site, which they say was built on sacred tribal land. Now, a planned firework display um, had drawn criticism due to the potential environmental impact, such as wildfires and water contamination. Um, you know, that was their initial stance. That's how they were taking their initial stance against protesting the speech and the rally altogether, but it went on needless to say. Now, Trump did use this speech to criticize the protest movement that followed the death of George Floyd, and most media outlets are reporting that most of the speech was used to dismiss the widespread anti-racism protests across the country. Now, y'all, this was very interesting because Native Americans do not play about their tribal land. What are y'all's thoughts on this situation? Were you all following it? And, I mean, what are we thinking here? <sighs> Moving right along, y'all. In entertainment news, and y'all be sure to drop down in the comments at the end of this video and let me know what you think about these stories. I will be bringing these trending recaps um, on a every other week basis going forward because it's so much going on. It'd be just too time consuming for me to continue to bring them weekly, but I am going to do my best to try to bring forth uh, the trending stories on an every other week basis, in particularly because most people do not watch TV like that anymore. And a lot of times you're simply uninformed. So again, moving right along. This next story is actually coming to us out of Morristown, New Jersey. Y'all, in Morristown, New Jersey, another black man was found hanged in a tree. 20-year-old Armani Kilday is described as a beautiful young man. Armani Kilday was discovered hanging from a tree in a park in Morristown, New Jersey, and his death has been ruled a suicide, raising questions in the community. Hanging is a long symbol of racial terror against blacks by whites, and it has been rising in cities across the nation and protests over police-related killings of African Americans. He was found in Lewis Morris Park on June 28th, about an hour from his home. Friends and family remember Kilday, who graduated from basic training as a military policeman in the Army Reserves in February for his sensitivity towards mankind and his sense of humor, the report says. He dreamed of becoming an FBI or CIA agent and was set to attend James Madison University in the fall, the report notes. Armani was adopted by white parents from Ethiopia in 2005 when he was five years old, and he was known as a vigilante of sorts in the neighborhood community of Washington Township, New Jersey, helping to bring child predators to justice with the use of an Instagram account. However, according to a petition to bring light to Kilday's death, many believe clearly this could have been a racially charged lynching as it suspicious, suspiciously follows four hangings ruled suicides in California, New York City, and Houston over the last two months. The hanging 
blew completely under the radar for me because I heard nothing of this story, y'all, on the news and only recently discovered it in my research. Um, are you all familiar with this story? If so, drop down in the comments and let me know. I'd greatly appreciate the feedback. Now, moving right along, my next story is going to be entertainment news. Billy Porter. Billy Porter makes history and is on the Essence magazine cover. Continuing to break barriers, Poe's actor Billy Porter broke historical ground as the first black gay man to grace the digital cover of Essence magazine. Billy Porter isn't new to breaking ground for the LGBT community. He became the first black gay man to win an Emmy for his groundbreaking role on Pose. He was the first male identified cover star of Allure magazine back in January, and now he makes history as the first openly gay man to cover Essence magazine. In the cover story, Porter responded to America's past with racism, enslavement, and the Black Lives Matter movement. Interesting, y'all. Be sure to check that out. Again, Billy Porter is making history by gracing the Essence Magazine Digital Edition cover. Now, also in entertainment news, Mary J. Blige reveals a surprise Sun Goddess wine collection. She's making moves in the wine industry after launching her first Sun Goddess wine collection on June 29th. This limited edition selection has launched in partnership with the Italian Fantanelle Winery and will feature two exclusive bottles. Unveiling her new endeavor, the Grammy Award winning singer shared the news with her fans on Instagram. She's been working on this project for three years and it's finally here. So kudos to Mary J. Blige. That's really a nice accomplishment and I feel really happy for her because I would say the last year or two for Mary J. has been very tumultuous with her divorce from her husband and all that she's been going through. So kudos to her for that. Now, moving right along in sports news. Following the departure of the six-time Super Bowl champion quarterback Tom Brady, the New England Patriots have signed former Carolina Panthers MVP Cam Newton to fill his cleats. According to the Boston Herald, Newton reportedly signed a one-year deal worth $7.5 million with the Patriots after being released from the Panthers in March following an injury and limited playing time last season. The newly signed Patriot shared his news with his fans on June 28th. New England will kick off their 2020 NFL season on September 13th against the Miami Dolphins, and it is unclear if Cam Newton will be the starting quarterback. Now, also on celebrity news, y'all, Kanye West. Kanye West announced 2020 presidential run. Kanye announced in a tweet on Saturday, 4th of July, that he will be running for the president of the United States in the November election. Following his announcement on Twitter, Kim Kardashian West also confirmed the surprise news on her IG story. West first announced his plans in 2015 to run for the highest office in the nation during an acceptance speech at the MTV Video Awards. Now, it is unclear how West will get his name on the ballot with only 121 days before the election uh, because he will have to first meet guidelines in order to secure a spot. My, 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 my. What are y'all's thoughts? Kanye for president. And lastly, also in entertainment and celebrity news, Apple has landed the rights to Emancipation, a historical film about slavery that will star Will Smith, directed by Antoine Fuqua. After a heated bidding war, 
that topped $130 million at one point, Apple has landed the rights to Emancipation, a film about slavery. Smith, who will play Whipped Peter, follows a fugitive from slavery on his harrowing journey from Louisiana south to the northern states. Whipped Peter is modeled after a man named Gordon who was enslaved and escaped from a southern plantation to join the Union Army. A historical 1863 portrait shows images of Gordon during an Army medical examination. His whipped bare back has been widely recognized as the scourged back. This man's back is actually famous. Emancipation is slated for production in early 2021. Will Smith will sit as a producer of the film through his Westbrook Studios. Now this was a nice turn of events for the Smith family after their family was just trending last week with the whole Jada August Alcina debacle. Um, you know, there was the confession that August Alcina came out with of an alleged affair, and yo, it's a lot going on. But you guys, that is it, and that is all that I have for you right now in trending topics. I hope that you all enjoyed the commentary. Please don't forget to drop down in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts are. Um, I would love to hear the feedback and if you really enjoyed the commentary go ahead and hit that subscribe button turn that red button gray and continue to check out the content I'm Pandy of Pandy's Hair Candy and More thank you again for clicking on the video and I see you all in the next one bye now